Hey guys, if this image looks familiar, it's because it's the azaleas I painted during my live edagame workshop. I'll link the full workshop down in the description below. This is the reference image that we painted with, and this is a condensed version of that workshop, just sort of a tutorial. So I am missing some stages since I was dual recording using both my webcam and my phone for this, so I'm sure you guys will cut me some slack and forgive me. If you're looking for more edagame tutorials, I've got them here on this channel in my quick and easy watercolor playlist. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove my edagame paper from the edagame paper pack. If you are missing these materials, feel, fear, wow, can I talk? Fear not, you can use whatever you already have or you can find them down in the description below. I don't know why that was a tongue twister, but it sure was a tongue twister. So I'm using a little bit of washi tape just to adhere my watercolor paper to my watercolor support, which is just a piece of scrap chipboard scavenged from a used up sketchbook. I'm applying the washi tape to my wrist just to remove a little bit of the extra tack so it doesn't tear my edigame paper when I remove it later on. Now that we've got our workspace somewhat set up, I want to apologize for that black looming thing in the upper right corner. It is actually a different kind of phone clamp and it's going to be in the majority of this video, but this is not a common occurrence for me because I don't generally dual record and my other edigame tutorials were recorded on my main stand, not my secondary stand. And the stand I'm recording on is a stand from five and below. So honestly, I'm quite impressed with how well it did considering. It does take a little bit of adjustment though. All right, so I'm going to start by sketching my azalea. What I start with is some circular forms just to kind of help me place my flowers. Then I'm going to break those down in smaller forms. The photo I'm referencing is one that I personally took while I was down in Louisiana from my mom's garden. So I have 110% rights to use this image and to reference this image during this tutorial. If you would like to paint along, you also have my permission to use this image if you so desire. You guys will be able to find a link to the reference image in the Hedagame live stream video, which I will link down in the description below. So once I have my circle sketched, I'm going to break my circles down into individual petals. These are azalea buds, not azalea blossoms. So some of the petals have kind of folded up onto themselves. If you're looking at azalea blossoms, they have five lobes, they have five petals, but the buds themselves are kind of crinkled in on themselves. So they have more of like a cup-like appearance and look a bit more like multi-petaled cherry blossoms or multi-petaled apple blossoms. So I sketch everything in super lightly and then I go in a little bit darker to finalize it. I'm using a mechanical pencil because that's what I'm personally comfortable with. And it's got H lead in it so it's not too hard and not too soft and it's not going to tear the paper. Okay, so that is our finished sketch. I apologize that it's a little bit tricky to see, but you'll be able to see it a whole lot better once we start adding color. So with these edigame postcards, I generally like to start by filling in the background first. And for this background, we're going to be working with a lighter green and a spring yellow, just to kind of capture the freshness of spring. If you look at the reference image, the background is actually a whole lot of grass. We're not really painting a whole lot of grass. We're just going to give kind of an impressionist view of the grass. So in my other edigame watercolor videos, I've talked about edigame paper a lot, what makes it special. I talked about the paints we're using. We're using the Mozart Como Rebi set, but any Gensai style watercolors will work. So the Boku Undo set will work, the Akashia set will work, the Kurataki Gensai Tambi set will work. Any of these kind of watercolors that use a Nikama binder rather than like gum Arabic will work. You can also use Chinese watercolors for this, or honestly, you can use Western style 
style watercolors, you're just going to have to mix them a lot thicker than you might be used to. So honey based watercolors could be a good fit for this. So Gensai style watercolors are intended to be painted onto the paper really thickly. And they're also designed to be just a little bit more opaque than Western style watercolors. They're also designed for you not to do a whole lot of color mixing. Rather, you work mostly with the colors that you already have. So different edigame papers have different degrees of blendability. Um, this one is a particularly blendy paper and you're going to want to work wet into wet to kind of take advantage of that blendability because that's where a lot of the beauty and freshness of edigame comes from or like these surprising color blends and these surprising color pops. I'm also using Sumi brushes for this. That's what I'm comfortable using. But if you like uh, water brushes, you can definitely use water brushes for this. If you like Western style watercolor brushes, you can use those as well. You don't have to use Sumi brushes, but Sumi brushes are fairly inexpensive and they're a good workhorse brush. So I think it's good to just have a few of them around your studio regardless. So I've blocked in our cool yellow and our lighter green. I've gone in with a little bit of sap green and I've started kind of just adding some of that around the azaleas themselves. And now I'm going in with a cool blue. I think the Moz Art Kit calls it Azur Blue or Azurite Blue. And I'm just kind of painting it in. We're not trying to get really defined and we're fine with staying kind of splotchy because the whole point of edagame is the sort of freshness, this sort of liveliness, and that we're actually going to send this to someone. This is a postcard we're going to send to somebody. So we're not aiming for perfection. We're not aiming for something for reproduction. We're just aiming for something that kind of captures the beauty of the season that we're comfortable with sending to someone else. And that's something I really love about this art form. Form. Not to knock card makers, but to knock cards. This to me means so much more because you've done every aspect of it. Even if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, it's still really, really heartfelt, really handmade, and it came 100% from you. And that's what's really important to me. So we're starting in now with the blossoms. We allowed the background to dry a little bitty bit, but it's still pretty wet. And we're starting with a mix of red and the warmer pink to give us a nice pink color here. We're adding it towards the bottom of the blossom and then we are uh, using a wet brush with just water in it. So we're dual wielding two brushes. One brush has the color, the other brush has just water in it. We're using that to kind of blend it out. And I'm working petal by petal and I'm working for kind of this nice ombre effect. Now I'm try wielding brushes. I have a much smaller Mento style brush and I'm using that to dab in a really saturated mix at the tops and at the bottoms of the petals so we get this beautiful diffused blend.
And we're just going to do this flower by flower, petal by petal. I want to tell you guys that, uh, so the full video, the full workshop I did for this took about an hour, 15 minutes, which isn't bad at all. Um, so this has been time lapsed about two times. So if you're working on something like this, you want to kind of block out an hour of time, but a lot of that time is going to be spent waiting for it to dry. So you can definitely kind of work on other things while you're doing this. You could play some Animal Crossing. You could read a book. When I was in Louisiana, I was cooking dinner and doing these. So um, this is the sort of project that kind of lends itself to putting down and picking up, putting down and picking up, which I know is really beneficial for people who have kids who <laughs> cannot necessarily devote two hours to something this could be a good watercolor project for you as my flowers kind of dry I start going in with a thicker mix and kind of adding the freckles that uh, if you look closely at azaleas, you'll notice that often they have like little pink freckles as they get towards the center of the blossoms. So I'm kind of adding some of the freckles. I'm also adding a little bit more contrast and adding kind of a nice diffused blend of color. So with watercolor, patience is really a virtue. You have to wait for the paper to dry. Uh, sometimes you have to wait for just the right spot so you can get the kind of wet into wet you want. So this is the sort of thing where be patient with yourself. Put on some chill music or watch a movie and just kind of relax into it. There is no need to rush through it. And it's also okay if the first time you paint this, the first 20 times you paint something like this, you're not super hot on it. Again, we're not aiming for perfection. We're aiming for this is something you made with your own two hands. You took a risk. and just just by doing this at all, even if it doesn't turn out well, you're still way further than 90% of the population because so many people talk about how they want to learn how to draw and they want to learn how to paint and they never do it because they let fear stop them. So you're a warrior. You're create courageous just by trying this. And I'm super proud of you for taking the risk. The more you do it, the better you're going to get. So now that my flowers are blocked in, um, I went in and I kind of filled in a green area that I'd missed the first time. And now I'm going into the new leaves on the azalea branch and just blocking them in with a cool yellow and then going in with a little bit of green.
For the azalea branch, I went in with a little bit of Payne's gray, which is kind of a cool blue gray. And then I'm dabbing in a little bit of Indian red or like red oxide wet into wet. So the two will kind of blend and merge together. I'm also going in and adding more details to the individual azalea blossoms using a really small menso style brush. After that had a bit of a chance to dry, I go into the leaves and I'm going to add just a little bit of green to add a little bit of definition because the leaves are definitely getting kind of lost into that background. And now that the stem is mostly dry but not fully dry, I'm going in with a little bit more Payne's Gray. I'm going to add some more darkness, some more depth to the stem itself. So at this point I really could call it done. It does look quite nice, but I decided to get really nitpicky and go in and like add way more details using that warmer or that more saturated pink violet color. Um, it's kind of like a magenta. I should just call it a magenta. It's definitely a magenta. Mozart calls it like cerise, which is why I never remember what it is because those kind of names mean nothing to me. And I'm using a small Menso style brush just to add some more details. So one of the things I, I personally love about watercolor and watercolor painting is I use watercolor for a pretty wide array of things. I have a watercolor comic, 7 inch Kara, so that's used for storytelling and I have kind of a straightforward children's book style for it. You guys can check it out at 7inchcare.com. The first six chapters are free to, to read. I also use watercolor with ink and I create a lot of illustrations that way. And then I do highly referenced watercolor illustrations like this Edagame illustration. And I find that all three different types of watercolor 
really kind of inform each other and they help me progress with the other types of watercolor I'm doing. So even if you want to use watercolor strictly for storytelling purposes, doing watercolor studies is a great way to become more familiar with the media, to become more familiar with your brushes, to learn some tricks that are really just going to take it to the next level. And it's just about building skills and building familiarity. Like it's like muscle memory. Like the more you ride a bike, the better you're going to get at riding a bike. That's the same with watercolor. So now that I finished the watercolor portion, I want to start inking. And for this, I'm going to use the Pintel pigment brush pins. And I'm just trying to find a good angle with my secondary phone stand. So I do apologize for the movement. We're mostly going to be using the extra fine brush, which I've talked about in some detail in other videos, but I just really love this thing. It's been, it was on my like best of 2018 list. Um, I think everyone should use it. So, you know, I'm definitely going to plug it. So on that note, as I evangelize art supplies, this video was absolutely not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. It wasn't sponsored by Mozart. It wasn't sponsored by Akashia. It wasn't sponsored by Pintel. Um, I'm just talking about this from experience and coming at it from a place of love. They've sent me no money. We've been in no contact. They didn't even send me any of this stuff for free. This is all my stuff and I just happen to really like it. So I'm using the extra fine brush pen to just kind of lightly, you can see I'm not applying much pressure at all, lightly draw in the petals. And I'm trying to have kind of wibbly wobbly lines since petals have kind of wibbly wobbly lines. I'm trying to keep my line art really light because petals are really light. And I'm tr using stop and go or hide and seek style lines. That's where the lines stop and start, stop and start to kind of capture the lighting and the delicacy of these petals. And I'm starting with the petals the flowers first because after that I may decide whether or not I want to go in and do any inking on the background. So basically I always ink the most important elements first when my hand is freshest, when my mind is freshest, and then I go in and ink the background using the decisions I made on the foreground to inform how I go about inking or painting the background. Um, with this, I started with the background first just because um, with Aragame, kind of the areas that take up the most space, I will generally fill in first if I know what I want to do with them. Sometimes, depending on your subject matter, like I painted a gourd a while back, I painted the gourd first and then I did the background in a contrast color. So that would be an instance of where you want to paint your subject first and then allow the subject you painted to inform the background that you're going to paint. And I have loads of watercolor tutorials and drawing tutorials and comic tutorials here on this channel. So if you're looking for more art, if you want to use this time to kind of distract yourself and pursue a hobby you've always wanted to pursue, if you have the creative space mentally and physically to do so, now could be a good time for that. For many people, art does serve as, as an escape. And so many of us can never justify finding the time to make art. So this is what the inks look like at this point. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of white gouache. I apologize that you guys can't really see it. Um, I'm going to mix it up to like the consistency of cream. And then I'm going to go in with a menso brush and use my brush to add in some details and some highlights. So you can see it on the brush itself. So I'm just going to use it to kind of pull in some of the stamens so they're a little bit easier to see and they contrast a little bit better. I'm also going to add some white highlights to the petals themselves so they're a little bit more distinct as well as to the leaves just to kind of help pop them out from the background. All right, so we are almost finished. All that's really left is to remove our edagame from its structural support. And that is Bowie reminding you guys, reminding me to remind you to please support me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. Your financial support goes towards buying his neutros and nom nom nows, and he really, really likes those. So if you want to help me keep my boy in the style that he has become accustomed to, you can join me at patreon.com slash 
slash natto soup. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for today's azalea tutorial. If you're looking for more edigame watercolor projects, I've got them here on this channel, as well as loads of great easy step-by-step -step watercolor tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a 